Hello, my name is Aaron Stark, and I'd like to share with you my perspectives on quinoa. So I was introduced to quinoa in the early 90s as a budding chef, but it really didn't take hold. My love affair for quinoa didn't take hold until I uh, entered a sous chef position at a Novo Peruvian restaurant in Portland called Andina. Um, in that, uh, shortly thereafter, I became executive chef of Andina, and we won the Oregonian's Restaurant of the Year. Uh, I learned so much about quinoa, about how it was cooked traditionally, uh, new methods, and uses of quinoa. So when it comes to cooking quinoa, there are two approaches. One that's prescribed by box brands, and that's the absorption method. Um, there's some pros and cons to that. Uh, some of the pros are that you can impart flavors to the quinoa uh, with aromatic vegetables, spices, and herbs. Uh, some of the cons are, depending on the size of the grain of quinoa uh, and the ratio of water to grain, uh, you can easily overcook the quinoa. There's no controllability. Um, also, quinoa, because of the saponin that's rinsed during the processing of the quinoa, there's a residual bitterness that comes with the quinoa. So when you cook an absorption method, that bitterness kind of remains with the quinoa. Um, in parts of South America and Peru, that bitterness is actually uh, something that's uh, desirable. Um, I prefer the plunge or the pasta method to cooking quinoa. And that is, um, if you have your quinoa, you don't need to, to rinse the quinoa. Um, we're gonna start out with some uh, boiling pot of water, and we're gonna salt that water like the sea. Through cooking uh, quinoa, the plunge or pasta method, you can control the firmness uh, of the quinoa uh, through al dente. You put a piece of quinoa through your two front teeth, and just see where it is. You can anticipate the residual heat or carryover cooking of the quinoa, um, and it really works out well. The one thing you will need is a nice fine mesh strainer or a chinois. Um, if you have a colander, you'll lose half of it down the drain, and the worst thing in the world is to have quinoa in your drains. Uh, so this is a, a, a necessity for, for cooking the plunge method, but uh, I think, think it's the best way to go. So what we're gonna do is just add our, um, I've got a 200 grams of quinoa here and I'm just gonna add that to my salted boiling water. So here we are, I've got the quinoa in boiling water and I'm being vigilant, uh, stirring it up, watching it. Um, I'll just come here and just take a little spoon and grab some of the quinoa and if you can see, you can see where it's translucent, but it's still got the white center. And if I just take a little bit of this and put it between my two front teeth, then that's the al dente in it. Keeping in mind that when I strain this quinoa through my fine mesh strainer, that I'm actually anticipating some carryover cooking of the quinoa because the number one rule in cooking if something is hot it's still cooking. Okay. Just get it up like that. And what I'll do is I'll just bring a baking sheet over. Get as much of that liquid out as possible. And then I'll transfer the quinoa to my baking sheet. And then I'll just flatten it out 
so it can cool naturally. So the idea of running tap water over quinoa, I could certainly do that if I really needed to arrest the cooking process of the quinoa, but in this case I've taken in consideration that the residual heat in the quinoa is going to carry over cook it perfectly. And if I just leave it out on the counter in a matter of minutes it'll cool down so I can really start working with it. Here we are at Finn River Farm, and this is Chimicum Creek. My inspiration for my recipe today is the fact that at Finn River, you have a salmon creek that goes through, and the apple orchard, and just beyond the apple orchard is quinoa. Here on the Olympic Peninsula, uh, we have um, uh, an affection for salmon. And you might be asking, where does this meet up with quinoa? Well. In recent years, farmers have been trialing and growing quinoa, and it does particularly well here on the Olympic Peninsula. So today, I'm gonna do a dish. It's a summer apple and quinoa encrusted salmon. So let's do it, shall we? So here I've got the cooled down cooked quinoa, and what I'd like to do now is just to toast it up a bit, just to give my dish that I'm gonna prepare a little bit of flavor. So I'll just start by adding my cooled down cooked quinoa to a nonstick pan and then turn that pan on over a low heat. So the quinoa, we can hear it popping in the hot pan. I'm toasting it because I want to give my quinoa, not only to dry it out a little bit, to give it texture, but I also want to get a nuttiness to it. So I'm just going to be vigilant and keep the quinoa stirring up in the pan. And I want a nice light golden color to it. So once my quinoa has achieved that nice caramelized golden color over the flame, keeping it agitated, I just take it off the flame and pop it into a nice bowl, cool it down for later. So for my quinoa encrusted summer green apple, salmon. I start out with two tablespoons of mayonnaise. Uh, you can certainly make your own mayonnaise if you'd like. I've got two tablespoons of freshly picked summer green apple. What I'm looking for is the sourness of a summer apple. Uh, here at the beginning of August, those are some super sour apples that'll really go well with our coho. Um, and in this case, uh, it almost replaces a citrus fruit. Um, I've got two tablespoons of a chiffonade of Italian parsley and two tablespoons of freshly chopped chives, salt, and pepper. So I'll just combine all of these and make a nice remoulade for our, our coho dish. So there's my summer tart green apples, my chiffonade of Italian parsley, my fresh chopped chives. Just mix this together. And hit it with a little plush, a little bit of kosher salt, and a little freshly ground black pepper. Give it a taste. Beautiful. So here I have a nice piece, uh, probably about a six, seven ounce piece of coho salmon. Uh, the first thing that I want to do is I want to season it, salt and pepper, both sides. Boom. Here's the salt. Get it over to the other side. Boom. So I'm going to add about a tablespoon of organic canola oil, high temperature canola oil, to my pan and let it get up to temperature. Swirl that canola oil around, see the viscosity will loosen up. We'll see wisps of smoke coming off of it. Salmon has two sides. It's got the skin side and then the presentation side. I'm going to make sure that I sear the presentation side first and then flip it on its back. 
um, on the skin side. And we'll get this nice and hot. One of the tools that I'm using today are the Palatex, um, which is a fish spatula. Should help us out. Um, when sauteing fish, it's important to know how to put the fish into the pan. And this goes with everything we want to sear. As I put the fish into the pan, I put it down and let it go forward. That way that hot oil splashes that way. So I'm just going to let it sit there and sear in. I don't want to be shifting the salmon around in the pan. I want it to set its sear, sear lines, sear spots, for at least the first minute or so. And we don't want to cook this all the way because this dish will finish up in the oven. So here, I just give it a little shift around. Give it a look, see. Nice. Golden caramelization of that salmon. So we get to the point where we feel confident. And just flip that salmon over. So now to put our, our salmon dish together, um, I've got a nice piece of coho salmon that's been seared with salt and pepper. I've got some toasted quinoa. And I've got my green apple, parsley, chive, remoulade. So the first thing I want to do is I want to treat the top of this fish with some of the remoulade. Like so. Boom, boom, boom. And there's that. Now this remoulade not only imparts flavor, but it acts as like a glue for my crispy, crunchy quinoa. And one of the bigger challenges in fish cookery is the idea of texture and parting texture. Quinoa is a beautiful item, nutritious item, to add texture to fish. So here we are. Um, I have this on a nice baking sheet pan. I'm gonna place it in the oven, uh, 400 degree oven. Um, for about uh, anywhere from four to six minutes. I'm pulling our salmon from the oven. Ooh, beautiful. So I'll just get a nice check at the interim temperature. The number one rule in cooking is that if something is hot, it's gonna carry over cook. So we'll just let that rest up and it'll carry over 10 degrees. Just pop it over here. Summer green apple and quinoa encrusted coho salmon. So now 